thought for the day, brothers and sisters. Today is reading in the book of Job, Job chapter 35, where we have Elihu continuing to speak. And in this chapter, he starts off basically speaking of the self-righteousness of Job. Now, again, there are times in life when people speak the truth, but they also are speaking lies. You often hear me remind us that even a broken clock can give the right time twice a day. And Elihu is talking about Job and his suffering and how he's being self-righteous in his relationship with God. And there is some truth to that, but these friends should have been a little bit more or a lot more compassionate to Job and his suffering. But I wanted to speak today about uh, self-righteousness. Oftentimes in life, we need to be reminded that our righteous deeds are like filthy rags in God's sight. Isaiah chapter 64 verse 6 reminds us of that. Basically, that's talking about something that's not very pleasant. Filthy rags has to do with, as a custodian, sometimes I have to clean the, the women's bathroom. And if the women have their menstrual cycle, we have to throw those things away. And that's basically what our righteous deeds are before God. It should humble us. It should remind us that we only are what we are by the grace of God. As the Apostle Paul reminds us in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 10, Isaiah chapter 1, verse 9, we're reminded that unless God had left a remnant, we'd all be like Sodom and Gomorrah. We need to be humble, brothers and sisters, to remember <clears throat> that we need to take the beam out of our own eye before we worry about the speck in somebody else's eye. As our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ reminded us of Matthew chapter 7 verse 5 there is a young couple that lives in my co-op complex where I live and um, when I came out this morning to do my devotional video I seen them coming out of the apartment together they're not married um, can only imagine what they're doing with each other but in our flesh we can become very self-righteous like oh look how bad they are sinful look down at them but I need to be reminded, go through the corridors of time in my own past, say 30, 35 years ago, and think about when I was a young man, what was I doing? I was doing nothing different than what they were doing. You see, it's very easy to look at the sins of others. I often remind us that by nature and our flesh, we look at the sins of others under a microscope, and we look at our own sins under the lens of a telescope. What I mean by that is that we often look at other people's sins very, very closely. A microscope sees things very fine, very closely. A telescope sees things from far away, like the moon, the sun. And often that's how we look at our sins. We look at our sins very far away. We look at the Donald Trumps. We look at the Joe Bidens of society, the Johnny Depps of society. And we're like, oh, wow, look how evil and wicked they are. You could look at the Madonnas, the Shares, um, the, the other famous people, Oprah Winfrey, whoever you want to name. And we could say, wow, how sinful and wicked they are. And in God's sight, they are. But we need to be reminded of the parable that our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ gave in Matthew. I mean, in Luke chapter 18, verses 9 to 14 of the Pharisee and the tax, tax collector. You see, when Christ walked this earth some 2,000 years ago, the biggest problem he had with, was not with the sinners of society. You see, Matthew chapter 9, verses 12 and 13 tells us that Christ came to call sinners. He knew that the sick needed a doctor. Sinners often came to Christ. The, the prostitutes, the lepers, the tax collectors, rugged, tough fishermen. But who Christ had the most trouble with were those who knew the Bible. The Torah of that day, the religious people, the Pharisees. And that's what Christ spoke about in this parable in Luke chapter 18, verses 9 to 14. The Pharisees were like, oh, look at me, Lord. I, everything is I, I fast, I tithe, I do this, I do that. Everything is I, I, I. The tax collector did nothing but just beat his breast and said, God, have mercy on me, a sinner. And Christ said, that person went home justified. How often in my life, and if we look at ourselves, we're like those people with the stones in their hand ready to kill that woman that was caught in the act of adultery in John chapter 8, verses 1 to 11. 
How often we look down at the sins of others simply because they sin maybe differently than us. Or maybe they look differently, different than us, different color skin or whatever it might be. A different uh, political persuasion. My brothers and sisters, we need to be reminded we only are what we are by the grace of God. Our righteousness is in Christ and him alone. 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 30 tells us that. 2 Peter chapter 1 verse 1 we're told that our righteousness is found only in Jesus Christ, our Lord and our God. That's a good verse for Jehovah Witnesses that don't believe that Jesus is God. In the book of Proverbs, you read often of the word wisdom. Wisdom is found in Christ. Again, 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 30. Christ is our wisdom. Everything is centered around Christ, my friends. When you are tempted to look down at the sins of others, remind yourself that you are only are what you are by the grace of God. And if had not God spared your life, had God not changed you, where would you be right now? I hope today's devotional video will humble us. You know, I was reading recently a little bit about the life of Jacob. Jacob was a very deceiving person. He was a slickster. He deceived his own brother, his birthright. But what did God do to him? God fought with him. Remember that wrestling match and his hip was messed up. And after that, a little later, we read, that, well, during the lifespan of Jacob, we read also of how he was deceived by Laban. He thought he was going to get the right woman. He had to work 14 years for the woman that he actually would love. You see, what goes around comes around. We reap what we sow. You see, Jacob was a deceiver, and now he got deceived. Jacob was, was slick. He thought he was cunning. And he came out of a wrestling match with God with a broken hip. And sometimes God will humble us. He'll put us through circumstances simply because of our pride, our boasting of who we are deceiving others again what goes around comes around we reap what we sow and if we judge others and we're harsh with others in their sins god could discipline us god could humble us my friends i hope today's devotional video will encourage us all to not condemn other people in their sins and our self-righteousness but as ephesians chapter 5 verse 11 tells us expose sins and we can do that when we speak the truth in love, as Ephesians chapter 4, verse 15 tells us. In my own Christian life, I've been guilty of speaking the truth in anger, in malice, in hatred, in pride. We could quote the Bible, but our motives, we got to check our motives. We have to check our hearts. Heavenly Father, Lord God, I thank you for all my brothers and sisters in Christ who see this devotional video today, Lord. Help us to guard our hearts, as Proverbs chapter 4, verse 23 tells us. Remind us that we are what we are as we think in our hearts, as Proverbs chapter 23, verse 7 reminds us. Help us, O Lord God, to have a pure heart. Fill us with your Holy Spirit this day, in Jesus' name. God bless you all, my friends.